again. Welcome to Bands Talk. I'm Tammy Simmons. And I'm Carla Garrick. And here we are. One day... Oh, well. I was going to say one day before St. Patrick's Day, and then I had a, my brain did a sad face. Because that means a year ago, we shut all the restaurants down in New we, Hampshire. Uh, we, sh- we, 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 we flattened... The, the, the curve was flattened, or was, was the, the earth We were on the precipice <laughs> of flattening a curve in two weeks. And um, the reality is, is it's a year later, and... Um, it is a year later, and we have devastated the economy. We've really changed, I think, the way people interact. People have it's, uh, become we, different. We've become, uh, I mean, I personally believe we've actually primed people's amygdala into some kind of fear model that mm. just makes them really easy to manipulate. I agree. And, uh, yeah, you know, so we've, we've had a rough year, but apparently, you know, now that we have Biden there in the it's White House, COVID's wonderful. all over, and, you know, life's going on, and so... I will embrace that. Let's, you know, let's just, move let's on. just get life back on the road. Right. So that is exciting. It is weird. I saw an article. So um, the ins- Inside Scoop in Bedford, which is an ice cream shop and a coffee shop. <laughs> yeah, because the Inside Scoop is not the newspapers anymore. Right. Um, which I never really thought about in that terms. Isn't that funny? But anyways, I read in the paper, I think it was in the paper, or maybe it was a Facebook post, that, you know, a year ago she was, um, you know, recollecting that a year ago they shut down and they figured it was for a few days and blah, blah, blah. But what I found bizarre is they still don't have indoor. You still can't go inside the inside scoop. So So here's what I find. You can only get ice cream in this little window or a coffee. Here's here's what I find bizarre. So for a year, we we told people it has to be six feet. Yeah. And now the people are like, eh. You know, now suddenly they're like, well, it has to be three feet. (laughs) Or so, so basically sticking to the program of consistency and saying the same thing for a year. It's like it was nonsense when they came up with it, and it's still nonsense. And if the fact that they said 12 feet, 6 feet, 3 feet doesn't doesn't indicate to you that it's nonsense, then I don't know what And I get, like, I think back, I think about how much everybody was wiping everything down. (laughs) This poor table. This poor table. I mean, everything in this studio is, like, permanently bleach stained. But... I think about it, and I remember at the time thinking, I mean, I cannot, okay, maybe at the very beginning they thought it was still, but I mean, this went on and on and on, and businesses are, like, cleaning things, and you still see it. I was at Aldi yesterday, and they're wiping down the, the counter that they people pack their groceries in, and I thought, I don't really know unless people are licking the counter. Like, I just don't oh, get but, it. I mean, in between, they also ascertain it's not really transferable no. off surfaces and all this but stuff. But we're still so, wiping stuff down. But we're down. still doing we're still you know, the dumb stuff that and, we were doing 12 months ago. I mean, it's good to be clean. Don't get me wrong. It's wonderful to be clean. I'm glad to you know, know that people have decided they can um, should wash their hands. Wash your hands once in a while. You know, maybe too cough into your sleeve you know? instead of just I mean, spewing like, well, your you know. spit everywhere. <laughs> so here's what I want to talk about, Tammy. Well, I know what you're going to want to talk about. Well, don't steal my thunder, I'm just first show of the all. Picture, so you don't can talk. show the picture yet. Jeez. I brought the paper. All right. So did I. I know, but you can talk. Okay. No, no, she should talk. <laughs> okay, well, if we're zooming in, so show the paper, no, no. Tammy. Stay there. No, don't be so zoomed. it is Sunshine Week. What does that mean? Sunshine Week is the national time when we, as open government proponents, celebrate open and transparent and responsive and accountable government. Right. So this is supposed to be a super special week. So I had this brainwave last week. Yes, you did. And I can verify this because Carla told me this last week. So this, this isn't after the fact. This was oh, definitely yeah, before no, the fact. No. So and, this is and legit. So I woke up and I was like, what can we do for Sunshine Week that would actually make an impact? Um, on an average granite stater, everyone in our beautiful state, like how, how can we help people understand the problem that we have with keeping our government responsive and accountable? And so I was like, you know, this darn Lori's list that we've been working on forever and, and shout out to the union leader, every newspaper in New Hampshire that's been fighting First Amendment, you know, open government transparency issues. And uh, so we got a court decision twice that said in 2019, Judge Temple said, yes, you know what, you should release the list and you can't redact it. You have to release the list, right? Because it's important for us to know who is doing crappy things so that we can take care of the problem. 
So I called Gregory Sullivan, who is the premier First Amendment attorney in New Hampshire. He does all the union leader cases. In fact, he has only lost two Supreme Court cases really? ever. And the one was Fenneman, which he managed to overturn last year. And the other one he's coming for, I believe, soon. So that's pretty exciting. I've decided this gentleman needs to be my mentor. That's right. There you go. So I called him and I was like, hey, I had this idea. Do you think we can make this happen? And so he was like, it'll be better coming from me. Yep. He's right. Always. But we made it happen. So this, ladies and gentlemen, is the entire redacted Lori's list. So this list now says here is the name of the officer that you can't read. This is the town where something happened. This is where it happened or the date. And then this says what they did. So the what they did includes things like use of excessive force, lying, uh, falsifying records, which is something that happened in my own case. Untruthfulness. Untruthfulness. Blah, de, blah, blah, blah. So the point of this was to create a visual representation <laughs> for the average person back home, the person who reads the Sunday paper, to go, this wow, do I right? live in like, you know, well, I Cuba hope you or communist I hope China you don't live or... In, I hope you don't live in Laconia because somebody in Laconia in 2017, so that's recent times, deliberate lie during court case, administrative hearing, in a report, in an investigation, credibility. So here's the thing, right? So the way the Lori's list originally started, and the list is now called the exculpatory evidence schedule. But basically what this was is there is a federal requirement under a court case, I believe from the 60s, 63 maybe, called the Brady case. So what the Brady case said is if a prosecutor has exculpatory evidence, meaning maybe they, I don't know, have a confession from someone else in a murder, or they know this is a rotten cop who always places, you know, false evidence or, you know, puts drugs somewhere or a fake gun or whatever the story is, then you as the prosecutor have a duty to tell the uh, the defense attorney so that they can use that exculpatory evidence as part of their defense uh, for their client, right? So that was the thinking. So in New Hampshire, what they did is they started this list. It was originally called the Lori's list. And they said, okay, we keep this list. And what happens is if there is an officer, there should be about 260, 270 names on there, which I believe is about 10% of the full-time police or law enforcement uh, force in New Hampshire. So, I mean, that's that's actually quite a lot. So what the... Uh, it's a good two dozen for Man that list that, Manchester. That, I mean, there's a shocking amount of people on this list. The surprising thing too, and I think part of the reason why they don't actually want to disclose the names is there is a concern, I think rightly, a concern that if we find out who these problematic officers are, and, you know, you need to understand it's a 20-page procedure that is laid out that tells you, as the police chief, what you have to do in order to get on this list. So this, quite frankly, is the tip of the iceberg. Mm -hmm. This isn't like the, the, the willy-nilly complaints. This isn't when someone had a bad experience and you go in right. and this you're like, is... oh, I'd like to complain, which, you know, is kind of hard already. This is literally like people where it's sustained findings of misconduct and where it has reached such a level that the police chief is like, oh, I'm going to have to write this guy yeah. up, right? So this Lori's list should... And there have been two court cases, including a Supreme Court decision from last year that remanded the case back to the lower court and said, look, you guys are going to have to disclose this. So back to my point, why, why they're hiding it. I think there's a concern that people will start to sue because, to, if, because you if you were arrested yeah. by that officer, you know, maybe you can say, well, I think, you know, something shady happened in my case, too. And, you know, I want to I want to point something out because people will often say to me, why are you so so anti cop? And first of all, I'm not actually anti cop. What no. I am is pro police accountability. Mm -hmm. I'm pro There's government accountability. Sorry. I'm just one of those people where I'm like, look, if we're doing it wrong, let's fix the problem and let's do it right. And if people are unwilling to fix the problem, that's part of the problem. Mm -hmm. So that's where I'm coming from. Right. And so 
My personal experience was when I got arrested in 2010 for filming police officers during a traffic stop, I got the police report probably a month after it, right? They sent it to you, they sent it to my lawyers and they sent it to me. And I will never forget, I got the police report and I started reading it and I actually burst out laughing because I was so shocked at, what? At, at the lies that were in the police report that I was like, no, this is like, I actually thought someone was goofing. Like someone had like, made up a fake absurd. one and they were like trying to, I don't know, tease me or something, right? And then I was like, no, like, oh my goodness, this police officer who we don't know, is he on this list? I don't even think he's on this list. So this is just routine policing. Um, you know, alleged amongst other things that I parked my car in the middle of the road, jumped out of the car <laughs> at 11.30 on a March night in New Hampshire, you know, on, uh, yeah. 114. And, yeah, 114. And ran down the road screaming, remember the cause. <laughs> and I was like, what? what? Who would do that? Like I parked in a parking lot right. and took out my video camera. I was 30 feet away from them behind a fence filming. So when I read that, and that was, you know, one of several misstatements, <laughs> um, I was just like, wow, really? Is this how it works? And so my issue comes from there was literally no reason no reason to lie in that police report so why did they do it so if, is that routine behavior do you just lie well, in reports like really, why that's really bizarre because i you would i would presume maybe i wouldn't presume but you should be able to presume that anybody who's being charged with a crime or any police report even if it doesn't revolve, involve a crime would be as accurate as possible. You know, I mean, maybe something's mistaken because the cop thought that, you know, I thought she was 50 feet away when she was really 30 feet with that, those type of things. But I mean, if I'm reading- But like wholesale, right. like, like I mean, we, we, in, in retrospect, I understand why, because someone on that police report was like, well, Ugh. she's a free stater. And so we want to build this case because that is honestly what happened. But you're building a case on lies, which well, is how you end up on the lawyer's list. Well, exactly, right? So anyway, so with this, I feel really happy that it was mm. printed, um, yeah. I, you know, Open government work is really important because, you know, we talked about this last week and now it's like, look, we can either reform or we're going to have to, you know, I don't know, tear it down or something. Right. So so these are steps towards that reform. If we can't clean house, if we can't get rid of 260 bad cops, and I think these are the really bad well, ones. Right. But I think the problem is actually deeper than that, because right. I'm almost willing to bet that my right. dude isn't even on this right. list. And I'm pretty sure the cop who threatened to break my car window and drag me out I through it because he didn't like the look I gave him as I passed him. So like, literally no law broken. And I even after the, another cop came in and said, yeah, this is just <laughs> this is all. Why don't you go on your way? This Manchester cop who I think is now retired, but um, said, "You know, I could just break your window and drag you out of it." And mm -hmm. I thought, "No, I, I don't, I don't really think that would work." Yeah, well, I mean, they threatened to break my window and drag me out of my <laughs> car too, you know. So it's anyway, crazy. so I mean, I guess that's that's standard operating procedure at this stage. So Sunshine Week, exciting time. We have had uh, last night. There was a class at the Naki Loeb Center. It was an online class. Yep. Um, it was a really nice mix. You know, we had mm. um, uh, Emily Rice from the city, uh, Greg Gregory Sullivan from the Union Leader, First Amendment attorney, uh, Gilles Bissonnette from ACLU, New Hampshire. Uh, there was, oh, I'm going to blank on the other name. Um, but it was a really good little talk, and there's going to be another one on Thursday. So depending on when this airs, you can find more information at the Naki Loeb Center. That's L-O-E-B. Uh, dot org, I believe. And so they just talked a little bit about, you know, sort of where they are. And I think that the positive is both uh, Gilles Bissonnette from the ACLU and Gregory Sullivan, um, who work, I would say, more from the citizens perspective mm. and not so much from the state perspective. Um, but, you know, if it's working right, those those two things should complement each other and not, you know, be this. this it shouldn't have this, to be adversaries. Yeah. You know, um, 
Because, you know, New Hampshire's preamble to the, the Constitution talks about, you know, we here in New Hampshire believe in open, transparent yep. government, you know, and that the, the government is serving the purpose of the people. So they feel very positive. They feel like uh, things are moving in the right direction in terms of more open, transparent government. I think that's true with regard to where we are on the court side mm -hmm. of things. But... Sneaky, sneaky, sneaky. And this is why I say, you know, they'll they'll come tell you, the police will say, we don't want bad cops either. I'm like, one, why has no one leaked the, the full list? Why, if you're all so honest, someone has it, some prosecutor has it, someone knows who's on the list, why not leak the list? But also, they have now introduced bill after bill after bill to reverse every single gain that we made and to understand how serious that is the Fenneman case that mm -hmm. Sullivan lost in 93 and then one so that's 27 years ago that we you know reversed last year so so it's been a hot second it's <laughs> been a long time right so they're literally trying to reverse that. So they're trying to say what that case said was that your personnel file is exempt. So any internal investigation, anything like that. Oh no, in New Hampshire, if you have a personnel file, that's, the, a, that's you're, a super you're secret just, lock. Yeah, you're just not, you don't have access to it, which is, which is nonsense right, if you because, look at our constitution. Because then everything's just going to get put in that file. Right. And then no, there'll be no access to and, that. And this isn't just, also to clarify, this isn't just a police issue. No. This is actually a municipal issue. Right. It's, you know, if you so have if an you issue had, with... Right, if there was a... And we've seen cases where there were clerks misappropriating money in different places in the state. But, you know, if, there, if the town council looked into it and didn't want to fire the clerk, they could just put it in their personnel file. Oh, or, or here's a a great one people can go to my wall to to read about this but mm. it's in Gilsom and this is a lady who got involved with right to know New Hampshire and we're always looking for new members so if this presses your buttons check it out right to know NH uh, online and um, she asked based on the budget in Gilsom she was like how much are people right. paid how it's many a town employees of 800 how, right. people she just wanted a there list of what people were paid three assistants for a town of 800 people and those same people and the aldermen and the selectmen or you know Whatever the townsmen right. everyone's like no you have no right to know what we pay ourselves and she was like excuse me i think she would and Don't why you work for you me? right well, and that's what a but the part that always boggles my mind when I read that, I thought, who works for like local government who really believes that their salary is secret, should be secret. In any case, you you work for the public, you work for the taxpayers. You don't work for some conglomerate. It's not like somebody asking for your personal finances or my personal, or we're not asking anybody's personal finances, but what that taxpayer is paying you. And that's the thing, right? So that's part of what public service is, in my opinion, right? Is you actually do give up mm -hmm. your individual right to privacy in your public duties. Now, if it's not your public duty, we can talk. But you know what? Your salary it's and your job is your public it's duty. It's the same reason why it's not why you can film police officers. Because right. they're not working. It's not the bank teller that you're you're filming. You are filming a public employee in the in the course of their employment right so you can't film the cop off duty in his backyard well unless you're at strange brew and they're beating up some poor yeah, guy i would recommend <laughs> you know i mean i brought it up again because i was curious you know if those officers are on this list right so so you know our checks and balances i'm sad to say um, are not serving us very well in New Hampshire. I don't think the Attorney General's office is doing a good job. Um, that report from the Strange Brew stuff, I mean, it's 10 years old now, but every but time still. I look at that photo and I'm like, what? We had an AG report that came out that said, well, it wasn't their finest moment. And then I was contacted by a state rep a couple of weeks ago and he was like, wasn't there some story about someone who, a police officer who shot and killed someone in Weir, New Hampshire, which is where I got arrested, yes, so I always pay attention. 
And he was like, and what was the outcome of that again? And I was like, oh, the town of Weir had to pay hundreds of thousands of dollars in a settlement to this poor guy's parents. Um, you know, he may or may not have been an alleged drug dealer, but he was fleeing and he was shot from behind. Well, so, and the police are not the court. They so, don't so, decide. So, no, no, it gets better than that. The AG's report for that case actually said, well, it's inconclusive what happened, and so we are not going to find anything. Now, let me say this very categorically. When your attorney general's office of your state, which is tasked with solving crimes, and there is a murder, and someone got shot in the back, it doesn't matter who did the shooting, if you can't solve that crime, what are you doing? And to then say it's acceptable for it, because it's police officers, and they get special treatment, they get a week to come up with a story, they get to all collude before they sit down to say what happened, they no longer test at all to ballistically see which officer shot which shot, so I'm just like, why are these people tasked with solving right. crimes? Well, and it's, I was thinking about, like, the, the, the Lori's list. And, you know, I'm trying to, like, okay, let's, maybe I try to think of it from some other point of view. And I really can't come up with one that works. But, you know, maybe somebody made a bad judgment call 20 years ago. Yeah, you know, like, I, okay. First of all, if you make bad, if you are untruthful, if you um, assault people, any of those things, I'm sorry, you should find a different profession. That's just the reality. But what I always find peculiar is, like you said, they have they get a week to come up with their their report, version. their version of what happened. But you know, how many people do you see in the paper who you know they they show up on the front page of the paper as arrested or whatever, and that you know you can't undo that. No, and so so I mean, part of how I ultimately ended up losing my job was because I got arrested for filming police officers. Right. They lied to my police report. They put me on the front page or right. on and in the know, newspaper. My board emailed it, you know, and they're like, is this you? Like, what's going on? You know, and, and, that's, and, yeah, and that's, yeah, like, that's what people have to stop and think about. Because sometimes I think people don't think about circumstances in actual real life people. Like, well, maybe you see somebody, you know, and it could be, sometimes they're heinous things. Sometimes they're, you know, people are accused of, I mean, look at the bomber guy, the guy that with the, when there was a. Oh, at the, the guy in, in Atlanta. At, or, yeah, Florida you know. or Georgia that they were sure it's him, it's him, it's him. I mean, they basically the ruined it. The stadium bo bombing, He had nothing right? to do with nothing. it. Nothing. But they picked him. Well, so, I mean, I just read a, a strange little book on the Boston Marathon yeah. bombing and I was like. Uh, I didn't really follow that case, but I mean, certainly based on this lady's evidence, it, it sounds like there might have been weird and questionable things that happened there, too. Um, I don't but know. But no worries. He, the, the Boston bomber that is in prison will get a $1,400 stimulus check, thanks to the Democrats in D.C. How, how about that? You know, How crazy that, is that? that? You read these things and you're like, this, who makes this stuff? I don't know, but here's the thing, right, with the, with the stimulus checks. I think it's really important for people to understand, you know, yes, you maybe you're excited, you're like, yeah, I could, I could spend that $1,400, you know, sure. I'll buy Bitcoin. Um, but, <laughs> I, I mean, I'm dead serious. No, uh, I, like, like I'm we not have buying printed, Bitcoin now because it's like $60,000. We have printed six trillion dollars in the past 12 months yep. so so to put that in in any kind of way that anyone can understand back home i hope i remember these numbers right so um one second no uh one million seconds is 12 days one billion seconds is 32 years and one trillion seconds is 31,688 Years. Years. So think so, about how so much money we're talking. So in magnitudes, we're talking this is 32,000 right. to, to, or whatever the number is. It's okay. an insanely large number. So, insanely. So it's, we have printed more money in the past year than I think all the money we printed in like in, 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 since then. So what does that mean? That means we're going to have inflation. Yep. And what is inflation? It is a invisible tax on you. Mm -hmm. The middle class, people the back home, people. people who pay 
for groceries, the people, people who, on limited the income. The people who are most looking forward to getting that $1,400 of free money. So that free money for the $1,400 you're getting, you have been indebted to the tune of $5,000. That's for this one thing. The average American, I think it's up to $78,000 that every American owes for the debt we're in. And it's like, look, we all know we have credit cards. You have, like, it's not sustainable. We're like past the stage where we're even paying we're credit card <laughs> debt with credit cards. You know, like when you're in that that hell spin. Right. We're worse than that by magnitudes. Because we order. can't even pay the credit card debts the with interest. the other credit card. We're like, we've maxed the other credit card. And so the question also is like, so are you happy that you're paying the debt for New New York or California where they haven't, you know, well, and, balanced and their that, books in, I don't know, 50 years? Of that, you know, of that stimulus bill, I think it was something like 13% of it actually is going in those $1,400 checks. So like... You get, this you're is paying your, for like people to learn things in Egypt. Yep, you're paying for bailing out um, state pensions in states that mismanage their pension funds. I mean, I think part of this is is everyone knows it's a shell game. So what can you do? Like, what can you do to protect yourself? I actually do highly recommend that you explore crypto, even if you don't, you know, even if it does cost, you know, one Bitcoin <laughs> is like 60 grand or something, not 50 maybe, I think it dropped overnight. But uh, could but you can buy a hundred dollars worth. Right. No, I know. I'm you know, so so I would highly recommend that people start to look at gold, silver, real metals, things where you can actually keep uh, inflationary protected assets. Uh, even I mean, real estate's also real a estate, bubble. Real estate, no, but, it, but real estate at least is something <laughs> somewhat tangible, tangible, and you at least at least it it doesn't you know it doesn't expire. Right, because um, people should watch. Your grocery prices, gas you know, prices. maybe look at your gas and your milk or something, right? And just start to watch that. And if you do see that things are well, not becoming milk, more, because that's got protections, right? Okay, maybe yeah, soda, uh, yeah, yeah. Um, or eggs, or well, because they also changed the definition of how inflation works. Right. You know, so they keep moving the goalposts. And if you don't believe me, remember two weeks to flatten the curve, A and year where ago. we got. So the goalposts always move. That means we can't hold them accountable. It means they get to do what they want. And I'm saying enough is enough. I'm saying go out tomorrow and buy corned beef and cabbage. <laughs> um, if, you can't, if you're seeing this live today on Tuesday, tomorrow is St. Patrick's Day. Um, there's plenty of places right here in Manchester that are offering um, delicious corned beef and cabbage. Um, my preference, obviously, is Murphy's Tap Room, um, Shashkeen downtown, um, even Margarita's downstairs, a Mexican restaurant apparently has food for St. Patrick's Day. <laughs> um, but, you know, get out there and support your local uh, restaurants. They can finally have 100% capacity as long as their tables are six feet apart, so that's a, a good thing, I guess. Um, and apparently, you can have music in a bar as long as you don't have more than three musicians, because we know if we have four musicians, grandma dies. Um, Okay, you know, 2020 <laughs> didn't teach you that the world is crazy and you should just take care of you and yeah, yours. Right. And get healthy and enjoy get the weather because it's going to be in the 40s every day for the next 10 days. So check out my book, The Ecstatic Pessimist, available on Amazon and on my website, carlagarrick.com. And we'll see you next week. Take care. Bye.